In this video, I'm going to talk about my dashboard, everything to do with my dashboard, how I use it, why I use it the way I do, and how you can create some of the more unconventional things that I have in my space. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. Now when first looking at my dashboard, you could probably notice I don't use my sidebar. I actually use what I call a tab bar. And essentially what this is, is a text block with emojis in. Now each of the emojis has a link on it. So I can go into this text block, add any emoji from the emoji menu, but it doesn't have the link on there. So what you can do is copy the link to a block, a page or a database in your Notion workspace, paste that link onto the emoji and now it's just a link, just like a hyperlink. Now, when you click on that emoji, it will take you either to the block, which in this case is in the page, or to the page database elsewhere in your space. Now, I prefer having this to my sidebar one because it's basically a quick links bar to just the things that I need to see. It's also dynamic, so I can add and take away things very, very quickly, and I can change the order of the pages and it doesn't affect the content of my page. And because it's in a text block, it's also a global block. This means I can have this in numerous different places and whenever I add anything or take anything, it will change in every iteration. So if I add high in my review page, it's a global block. So when I go back to my dashboard, you can see it's there. Now, when I take it out and go back to review, it's now gone because they are mirror images because it's a global block. For me, this also looks better than having the sidebar because it just brings a little bit of a different aesthetic to my page, but that's just personal preference. Now, when you go down, you can see I have a divider and I use the inline math for dividers because I like to have a bit of color in my space. Now, there are obvious downsides, one being on the phone, it doesn't go smaller, so it just looks like this big long line across. But for me, it's a nice way to split up my page and it's much more clear than the natural dividers that are in Notion. And it also means I can add titles to the certain sections. So when I have columns, I can see what that specific area is for. So if we go into my review space, you can see I have flashcards due. And then as you scroll down, you can see the next section. Makes things very clear and easy to navigate through because I don't have to go through to filters to see what that area is for. Now, the main use of my dashboard page is my to-do list, which is my task database in a list view. And what I can see is all of the tasks I need to do for today. So when we look into the filter, it is done that is not ticked and showing. So if we go into the list, you can see the bottom three tasks are ticked, but they're still there. And that's because they are showing because they are recurring task. But all of the other tasks are not recurring, which means if I tick the tick box, it will disappear from the view because that is the filter I have on that list. Now, I only want to see tasks that are either today or before today because I still need to do them. I don't really want to see all the tasks I need to do in the next couple of weeks. So when I go onto the task, you can see the date is either today or the date is yesterday or anything beforehand which means the things that I see on my today list are only things that I really need to do. You can also see I have emojis on the side of the task and those emojis basically tell me what area, so what tag those tasks are related to. I can see boxes monetization, the video means it's video creation, normally for YouTube, but it may be something else. The alarm is for an event and for the events, I actually have a tag on there as well. So I can see it very, very clearly. And then for my recurring tasks, I have another emoji so I can differentiate between the categories or tags of tasks when I'm just looking at my task list. I also sort my tasks by due date of the project. So you can see all of these are tasks, but they are related to projects. Some of these being website related, some of them being YouTube videos. So the video is a project. And when I go into the task, I have a due date roll up of the project. So I know when the project needs to be done by, and that is the due date for the task. So I know when I need to do a task, I can't put the task further than that due date. But in this specific case on my dashboard, I can sort it by due date. So I know what tasks I need to do first because the project is due earlier. Now the next sort is for tags. So I'll have all of my tasks that I need to do, but then I'll have my tag, i.e. the event tag next, which means the event will show up second on my list. So I'll have all of my tasks sorted by the due date and then my tags. 
and they have an event tag, a publishing tag, or a client tag. The tasks with the publishing tag will typically go to the top because they will have a due date associated to the project, i.e. the video. So it means I'll have publishing tag at the top, all of my tasks sorted, then the events, and then I will have my recurring task down at the bottom. If I was to create a new task in my scratch pad, which I'll explain a little bit in a minute, and then drag it into my task database, the date will be put on for today. But because my recurring task date is when I started doing the recurring task, it's beforehand, it means I will always have the same order of a new task being above my recurring tasks. One of the biggest advantages of using Notion for task and project management is I can see, okay, this is the task I need to do today. I can click on it, click on the relation to the project, and now I'm right at this project. So I can access my project, which is inside four different pages. It's inside my review area, my areas database, my project page in my areas database, and then a project in there. And I can do that in a couple of clicks straight from my dashboard. So I can see all of the associated tasks, scripts, and other information I need straight from my dashboard page. For those of you that have seen my space before, you'll probably recognize that daily reminders is something new to my space. And that's something everyone using Notion will be doing. They'll be adapting and tinkering their space to what suits them. For me, personally, the recurring task for daily became a bit of a friction point because I was having to use three clicks to get rid of those daily recurring reminders. I would click on the task, click last done, and then click off. But what I thought I'd do, because friction point, is just put it into a table at the bottom and then have them all as tick boxes. Now it's just one click to get it done. Then whenever a new day comes up, because it's filtered for today, I can add in a new row and then it will all refresh. And this is currently a work in progress. This is subject to change, but I thought I'd mention it in this video because the overview video, this wasn't actually here. Now for the rest of the recurring tasks, it still makes much more sense to use my old formula because I can have tasks weekly, certain days of the week, certain days of the month, etc. For my review task, it's a daily task, so it could be a reminder, but I actually use this in my task database because what I can do is relate all of the areas to my review Then I have a roll up of the cards due, so the flashcards that are due, the areas that are due, and then I'm using a formula just to summarize that information so I can see what's due in my review area from my dashboard without having to go there. Then if I was to go into my review area, you can see all of those flashcards that are due, and you can see the areas, there are none of them are ticked, so review says zero but I can see all of that from my dashboard because it's a task in my task database. If it was just a reminder, I would need to go to the review to see what I need to do. Moving across to my inbox, this is a linked database to my notes and ideas database. And these two things you can see, there is an emoji on them, which means I have partly processed these notes. And I will go further into detail how I manage note taking in Notion and knowledge management because that is a whole area on its own. But for this dashboard view, all these are are things typically I've clipped from YouTube, so I've used the Notion Clipper. I've clipped the video into the database, and because this is filtered for areas is empty, anything that doesn't have an area tag on it will show. Then when I go into the page, I can process that note. And again, I will go further into detail how I process notes, but once I have finished processing the note, I will then add an area tag onto the note. So again, if I go down to my scratchpad, just for an example, I'm gonna create note. And then you can see I have different templates depending on what sort of note it is, or maybe it's an idea. But once I've either processed the note or I've filtered the note for some reason, I can then add in an area. And once I've added the area, say it's blogging, for example, it now doesn't show in my dashboard view because it has that tag. And because this is blogging, let's just use the blogging template as an example. It's going to put the emoji on there. It's going to show that it's an idea because that's the template that I've used. And now it's not showing in my dashboard space in my inbox because it's showing in my blogging space, which is where I need that information. So you can see when I go into blogging, there is that note that I've just made. Now, I don't obviously need that note because there's nothing in it, so I'm just going to delete it. But that's a very quick example of how I use note taking in my dashboard from the clipper and then add an area tag to it so it appears in the appropriate place. 
Now I have kind of already gone over my scratch pad, but essentially it is just a space where I can put text blocks for either numbers, words, references, anything that comes to mind that I don't really want to action straight away. I can just type it down. If it's a task, I can drag it into the task database. If it's a note or idea, I can drag it up into my notes database. And if it's something I just needed to write down for a quick reference, maybe it's a phone number or an ID number or something like that, I can type it in and then just delete it when I'm finished. As I scroll down, you can see I have my calendar area. Now, personally, I don't use Google Calendar anymore. I used to when I did a lot of time blocking, but now I don't. If you're interested to see more of a comparison between Google Calendar and Notion, make sure you check out the video I did on that. But for this specific use case, I have all of my events in my Notion calendar, which is actually my tasks database. Then when I go into the event, I have the links that are needed. So in this example, I have the Crowdcast link in there. So when it appears on my task list at the top, because it's the same thing, I can go straight into the event or the task and click on the link. This database is filtered for tag is event. So whenever I add anything in this view, it will automatically add event tag to it. And then I have it for done is not ticked. Because these are actually technically tasks because they're things I will do. I could show all of the tasks that I've done, but I don't want to see the ones that I've done. I want to see the ones that I need to do. So I show the ones that need to do. I do have a second view in this calendar view, just in case I'm planning things out and I need to see if the day is busy. So because my tasks and events are linked together, they're in the same database, I have a view for tasks and events, which means if I'm planning to book an event, book a meeting, I can plan it around the tasks I have or I can move the task appropriately so that I can have the event at the right time. Now, as I scroll up, you can see I have the events in my task list. If I was to tick those off, they would disappear from my task list and my task calendar view. If you're interested to hear more about how I use Notion, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you there.